Hey guys, welcome back to Civil Learning Online. And today in this video, I am going to derive an expression for the crippling load when both ends of the column are fixed. In the previous video, I have discussed how to derive an expression for the crippling load when both of the column ends are hinged. And second was uh, when one end is fixed and other end is free. And the third one is when the both end are fixed. And uh, I hope you have watched my previous video. If not, then I have provided in the link uh, provided the link in the description. You can have the look. And without any further delay, let's get started. So let us begin the deriv derivation of this expression with some explanation. And uh, guys, l let me take you through the diagram first. And here, uh, in the diagram, it is clear that we have a, a column which is uh, fixed at both the ends. And uh, due to the load P, this is load P, and similar magnitude of load P is acting from bottom also. And due to that loading, the column is buckled along the section. This is the original section. A B is original section. And the curve which we, you are seeing is the buckled section due to the load P. And uh, we all know that Kipling load is that load when the buckling or the displacement of the column takes place. And as you can see here, due to the load P, our column is displaced at section X, that is at distance X from the column B to with Y value. Value Y, the column is displaced from its original position AB by Y value due to this loading. And also due to the loading, a moment are generated at the supports or the ends A and B of the column. Moment at A is MA and moment at B is MB and which are magnitude which are equal in magnitude. So we have denoted it with a constant value M naught or the M naught will be because both the moments are of equal value. So we have denoted it by a standard value that is M M naught. Now, as you can see here, the deflection of this column is taking concave form and if you have watched my previous video do you know then you know that the sign convention for the uh, this is concave sorry and uh, for concave the sign convention or the value of the moment will be negative uh, i have discussed about it in the previous video also so let uh, uh, in the so uh, this was the explanation ex explanation and now what we need to do is we have to write what uh, we have done is shown in this diagram here as a short description about what we have shown in this diagram and after that description we will uh, proceed with the derivation of the expression for the crippling load so i have written here consider a column fixed at both end a and b due to the load p the column is displaced by the value y this is small y displaced by value y at distance x from the end b now we will have the value of moment equals to here ei times d square y upon dx square equals to now see here guys here due to the fixed end fixed end has uh, takes all the three reactions summation x equals to zero summation y equals to zero and summation moment equals to zero and due to the here it is fixed in it means the, here the moment will be generated so we will have here m note and this is concave deflection is concave so our moment will be negative so loading multiplied by the displacement this is force time perpendicular distance is y so py is our value of moment and uh, rearranging this we will get ei times d square y upon dx square plus py equals to m naught so let this be equation one now guys after this what we need to do is we have to find a general solution of this equation and uh, this is what we have studied in uh, engineering mathematics so i am directly going to write the value here and if you want the video on the general solution of such equation then you can uh, leave a comment uh, on in this video or or we can you can directly remember or recite the uh, value for general solution of the, uh, these uh, equations so here the general solution of this equation is going to be so this is the general solution y equals to a times cos x root under p by ei plus b times sin x times root under p by ei plus m naught by p. Now guys this is our general solution and if we discuss about the end condition then here x is equals to 0 y equals to 0. Similarly here when x is equal to l y is equals to again 0 here. 
and here at x as x is equals to 0 and we will have dy upon dx equals to 0 and here a and b are our uh, coefficient or the constant of integration so we need to find the value of a and b first so if we apply the value of in condition that is x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 in this equation then we will have the value of at least we need to calculate the value of a and b so let us apply the in condition then we will write here at x equals to 0 and y is equals to 0 so if we put y equals to 0 and x equals to 0 then we will have here see here we will have 0 equals to a cos 0 x in x in the place of x we will put 0 here so cos 0 will be equals to 1 a plus and uh, when sign 0 will be 0 so m naught upon p so from here we will have the value of a equals to minus m naught upon p now to calculate the value of b uh, we have calculated the value of a that is a is equals to minus m naught upon p to calculate the b value of b we need to use this uh, use the value of dy by dx equals to 0 for that we need to find the derivative of this equation let this let this be, let this be uh, denoted by equation 1 and let us find the uh, derivative of equation 1 so differentiating differentiating equation 1 with respect to x we will have here dy upon dx equals to a multiply by root under p upon ei multiply by derivative of cos will be minus sine x times root under p upon ei plus b and here it will again have root under p upon ei multiply by derivative of sine will be cos x times root under p upon ei and the derivative of constant will be equals to 0 now uh, applying the boundary condition in equation 2 so applying applying dy upon dx equals to 0 and x equals to 0 then we will have here so put dy equals dy by dx equals to 0 and x equals to 0 then we will have here b multiply by root under p upon ei in equation 2 then we will have here b multiply by root under p upon ei equals to 0 now see here see here guys this is our crippling load then the value of either within we will have a condition here either either b is equals to 0 or root under p upon ei equals to 0 now see here we we cannot have the value of p equals to 0 because p is our p is our crippling load it must have so it must have some value so our b will be 0 so we will have b is equals to 0 from this using this we will have b is equals to 0 so we have calculated the value of uh, in con in in constants of integration that is a and b now let us rewrite the equation 1 uh, and we using the value of uh, and then we will put the value of a and b in that equation first let us rewrite the equation so this was the equation now if we put uh, we have got the value of uh, that is uh, a is equals to m naught upon p and uh, we need to put the value of a and b and we will apply a condition here that is at x equals to 0 we have used x x equals to 0 y equals to 0 and dy by dx equals to 0 now we will uh, be at distance l at uh, here then we have a condition that x equals to l and y equals to 0 so we, uh, first let us, let us rewrite the equation and then we will put that uh, condition uh, boundary value so this is what we get now at apply boundary value condition that is remaining value boundary value condition that is x equals to l y equals to 0 so we will have here 0 equals to minus uh, m cos uh, at, at, at place of x we will put l so minus m naught upon p cos l times root under p upon ei and this whole when multiplied by 0 gets 0 so m naught upon p now guys uh, take uh, m naught by p common then we will have here m naught upon p times 1 minus cos l 
times root under p upon e i equals to zero. How? See here. We can rewrite it as uh, m naught upon p minus m naught upon p cos l root under p upon e i equals to zero now from here we can take m naught by p common so we will have this term now we will have uh, cos l times root under p upon e i this one minus cos l times root under p i p upon e i equals to zero because the, when this portion get to that side then it will get converted into zero so from here we will have cos l times root under p upon e i equals to one bring this portion here then it will it is negative so it will get positive and one is equals to one now we will find a value where the cos theta value is equals to one so we know that cos theta is equals to one at theta equals to zero two pi four pi six pi so we will take the least value and so on so we will have here l times root under p upon e i equals to two pi now squaring on both side we will have l square p upon e i equals to 4 pi square now from here we will have p equals to pi square e i 4 times 4 pi square bring this this side then pi square e i upon l square sorry this was not visible see here we have bring this e i here then it will get 4 pi square e i upon L square and this is the boundary value condition when our both end of the column are uh, fixed and in the next video we have one remaining topic two remaining topic and the third one is when the one end of the column is fixed and other end is hinged we will discuss about that in the next lecture and also about the Rankine uh, formula so till then stay safe and take care of yourself see you in the next video